Hey, this is Presh Talwalker. The Turkish University entrance exams consist of two parts. First is a basic proficiency test that about 3 million students take. Then there are field proficiency tests in different subjects. About 2 million students take these tests and they can be quite challenging. In the last year, the mathematics test had an average score of about 7.6 out of 40 questions. That's only 20% of the questions that are solved correctly. So let's look at one such question. Let P of X be a fourth degree quartic polynomial with real coefficients. For all real values of X, the polynomial satisfies the condition P of X is greater than or equal to X. Now suppose P of 1 is equal to 1, P of 2 is equal to 4, and P of 3 is equal to 3. What is the value of P of 4 equal to? This is translated and adapted from a 2021 AYT exam, and I thank Alp for the suggestion. Pause the video if you'd like to give this problem a try, and when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve this problem. So this is much more challenging than it looked at first to me. I thought you could just substitute in the values for the polynomial, get a system of equations, and solve for the coefficients. But you only have three values for a fourth degree polynomial, so that's insufficient information. We're going to have to rely on other conditions given in the problem. So let's first define a new polynomial q of x to be equal to p of x minus x. Since p of x is greater than or equal to x, q of x will be greater than or equal to 0. Now, since p of x is a fourth degree polynomial, q of x is p of x minus x, so this will also be a fourth degree polynomial. Now let's solve for specific values of the polynomial q of x. q of 1 is equal to p of 1 minus 1. We were given that p of 1 is equal to 1, so this is equal to 1 minus 1, which equals 0. q of 2 is equal to p of 2 minus 2. We were given p of 2 is equal to 4, so this equals 4 minus 2, which equals 2. Finally, q of 3 is equal to p of 3 minus 3. We are given that p of 3 is equal to 3, so this equals 3 minus 3, which equals 0. So we now have three specific values of the polynomial q of x. So let's plot them to get a better understanding of this polynomial. One value is 1 comma 0, another value is 2 comma 2, and a third value is 3 comma 0. We know that q of x is greater than or equal to 0. Now as x approaches infinity, that means q of x has to also approach positive infinity. It can't go to negative infinity because q of x is greater than or equal to 0. So we know the limiting behavior on the right side of this graph. Similarly, as x goes to negative infinity, q of x has to go to positive infinity. So we also have the limiting behavior on the left side of the graph. How does this information help us? Well, we know three particular points, and we know the limiting behavior, and we know that q of x is a quartic. So, can we have any other roots? A quartic can have up to four roots. Well, the answer is no. So here's the reason why. So from the point 1, 0, we know on the left-hand side we're going to eventually have to go to positive infinity, and we know on the right-hand side we're going to have to go up to 2, 2. Similarly, for the point 2, 2, we know we have to increase up to this point, then at some point around that point or after it, we're going to have to go back down because we have to get down to 3, 0. For the point 3, 0, the function has to decrease to 3, 0, and then after that it's going to have to increase. So what have we identified? We have identified three different turning points or three different critical points or three different local minima or maxima. So one point here, another point here, and another point will be in the neighborhood of 2, 2. We don't know it is exactly 2, 2, but it'll be somewhere between 1, 0 and 3, 0. 
Now, since we have a quartic polynomial, its derivative q prime of x will be a cubic polynomial. The degree will be equal to three. So that derivative can have at most three turning points. So we've identified these are the three critical points. We can't have any more. So we can't have any other roots in this polynomial. So we know that the graph has to essentially connect the things we've already drawn. So it's going to have to come down over here. Then we're going to have to go up to two comma two or somewhere around there. It'll have to come back down to three comma zero, and then it'll have to go off to infinity. So this is what Q of X is going to look like. It's a sketch. We don't know exactly in the middle what it's going to look like, but it'll look something like this. Furthermore, at one comma zero, the graph is bouncing off the X axis and the same thing goes for three comma zero. So we have double roots over here. So we know that X minus one will be a double factor. So it'll be squared and the same thing with X minus three. Now, where does that get us? So Q of X will be equal to some scaling factor a multiplied by the square of X minus one multiplied by the square of X minus three. So we've completely factored the quartic polynomial Q of X. So all that remains is to solve for the scaling factor a to do that. We'll use the point two comma two. So we will substitute in that Q of two is equal to two and we will substitute in X is equal to two. Now simplifying this, we get, that two is equal to a. So we've solved for Q of X. Now we know that Q of X is equal to P of X minus X. Adding an X to both sides will give that P of X is equal to Q of X plus X. So we've solved that P of X is equal to two multiplied by the square of X minus one multiplied by the square of X minus three plus X. So we've solved for P of X. And the only thing that remains is to figure out the value of P of four. So we substitute in X is equal to four. Then we simplify this. This is two multiplied by three squared multiplied by one squared plus four. This all simplifies to be 22. And therefore P of four is equal to 22. And that's the answer. To conclude the video, I want to show a review example of how you could actually solve it on the test in a reasonable amount of time. So here's the question. Let P of X be a second degree quadratic polynomial with real coefficients. For all real values of X, the polynomial satisfies the condition P of X is greater than or equal to two X plus one. If P of one is equal to three and P of two is equal to eight, what is the value of P of negative one? So let's work this out. We'll define a new polynomial Q of X to be P of X minus the quantity two X plus one. This will be greater than or equal to zero. Now Q of one is equal to P of one minus two multiplied by one plus one. So this is all equal to zero. So we can now see that Q of X is a quadratic polynomial. We have one point that's one comma zero, and we know that Q of X is greater than or equal to zero. We're going to have one turning point here because it's a quadratic. So the graph will look something like this. So X is equal to one is a double root. So Q of X is equal to a scaling factor a multiplied by the square of X minus one. We want to solve for a, so we will now substitute Q of two. This is equal to P of two minus two times two plus one. This works out to be a minus five and that's equal to three. So we have that three is equal to a multiplied by the square of two minus one. That means a is equal to three. So we have Q of X is equal to three multiplied by the square of X minus one. Then P of X is equal to Q of X plus two X plus one. We substitute for Q of X and then we just need to evaluate at X is equal to negative one. So P of negative one is equal to three multiplied by the square of negative one minus one plus two times negative one plus one. And this all simplifies so that P of negative one is equal to 11. And that's the answer. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems one video at a time.